Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use some of the features of Open Altimetry to explore data from NASA's ISAT-2 mission. To get started, go to openaltimetry.org and click on the red button. The first thing that you'll see is a global map with uh, reference ground tracks for the selected day, which will be upon opening the latest day that has data. Um, and this pop-up window that alerts you to the fact that you need to zoom in in order to start seeing points um, indicating the segments of the um, ISAT-2 data. So we close that window. Um, we're going to go to October 31st, which causes a different set of ground tracks to be displayed. And then we're going to zoom in in a region of interest. Click on this by glass, and we'll go to this region around Glacier Bay, Alaska. Now, this zoom level, two things have happened. One is now you have this button called Select a Region, and um, the other is that you're seeing um, every reference ground track for ISAT. And the reason um, these are being displayed is to show you the coverage of data, regardless of the data that's being displayed. And if you click on one of the tracks, it'll show you, um, give you the track ID, and then what days in the current um, archive of open altimetry have data for that um, ground track. So we're going to zoom in a little closer here and start looking at some features of interest. But first, notice that um, the data stops um, at a certain latitude. Well, that's because um, there's cloud in this region. And to verify that, um, you can click the cloud icon, which brings in the MODIS surface reflectance product for that day. But since the two satellites aren't in uh, the same orbit, um, they'll have different overpass times and the cloud won't exactly correspond with the acquisition time of ISAP. For one reason or other, there's no data along this track uh, due to cloud. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit closer here. As I said, we're going to look at some interesting features over the surface. Um, now we're looking at 2% of the um, of the segments at this zoom level. Um, and you know we'll go a little bit closer so you can start seeing the individual beam pairs. So we're going to concentrate over here on the left, beams one and two. You can see them separate now. And we're going to look at um, this track as it crosses um, the terminus of this glacier. So we click the Select Region button, and then we click and drag a box. And what pops up from the right is the elevation profile for um, this track. So we just selected two beams. So two beams are shown. As you mouse over um, the elevation plot, it shows you uh, for each data point, uh, giving you a lat long elevation and a beam number, it shows you the corresponding location in, um, on, the, um, on the image. So uh, what you can see is that here was, the, here was the glacier surface, but here it's hit the terminus. So clearly it's receded since this image was taken. And then this is all um, the water surface, the proglacial lake. Um, and this is the other side. So if we say view photon data, we get this warning that says you have to have just one beam being displayed um, in order to see photon data because it become too confusing to show photons from um, multiple beams. So now we click, um, we selected, we deselected beam two, so we're looking at beam one, and clicking view photon data brings up a separate tab with the photon data, um, the individual photons displayed. So again, the under cursor will give you information about the position and the um, photon height. What we know is there are photons coming from below the surface here. Um, 
you can click on another beam um, if it was in the current view and it will plot that those photons from that beam so here's from from beam 2 and interesting thing that we see is there are a lot of photons coming from below the water surface if we click and zoom drag and zoom on the plot itself we can see that with some more detail so either this is reflections off sediment um, in the uh, water, uh, the, the proglacial lake, um, or it's multiple scatterings from, from icebergs, those that what I would expect to be above the surface. This might be uh, a flow right here. And then this is the, uh, this is the side. So we can reset zoom, and if we're interested in this data, we can click download photon data and it will immediately download a zip file containing the data in a CSV. Um, one thing to notice is that we're looking only at high confidence photons. If we, we can select medium confidence photons, which are shown in green, not too many of them, but there they are, and uh, low confidence photons will be shown in red, but again, um, Atlas is very confident about the photons it's classified, so um, we don't see any low confidence photons. Let's go back and select a different portion of this track, in particular the um, vegetation by the coast. So here we should see um, we're encompassing the ocean, some vegetation in the interior lake. We deselect beam two by clicking on the name. And view photons. And what we see here is um, this is the ocean surface, and it's a lot less smooth than the, uh, the inland water. And there are also photons coming from scattering from below the surface. So you're probably seeing waves here, and then um, photons coming from under the water. And then here we see um, vegetation on the um, and surface returns. Okay, um, a few more things to point out here. We can um, select beams in this view. Also, since we're looking at vegetation, um, and we're in the uh, region where there's also ATL08 data, we can look at the canopy data. So this plot looks um, doesn't show quite as much detail. Uh, ATL08 uses a different surface finding algorithm um, and, and a different uh, segment length. So it um, doesn't look quite the same, but uh, you'll see the same photon data because the photon data comes from ATL03. Um, and that's used by both ATL06, the land ice product, and ATL08, um, the vegetation product. Um, we can download the photon data here also, um, or we can print the chart or download the image of the chart. All right, so I'm going to show you how to work with annotations now. Say you found something really interesting here that you want to share with somebody else. Well, to do that, you have to be logged in. You go to the Info button, um, excuse me, if you go to the Menu button and go to My Open Altimetry, you can sign on with the uh, NASA Earth Data Single Sign-On Credentials. And we'll go back to ISAT2. And now under the Annotation menu, we can search annotations. We can um, search by keywords or just list all. When we list all, um, since I'm signed in, you'll see both the, um, the public ones that anybody can see and the private annotations. And let us um, go to this. 
location in Antarctica. And you'll notice that the, um, the projection now is um, polar, which you can change manually here. But zooming back in, we can select a region to show a profile. And what it shows us is this deep rift in the uh, Cisner Arch ice shelf. And if we select just one of the beams and view photon data, where you can see details of that rift. Okay, let me show you how to make an annotation. Um, if you've found something of interest that you want to share with others, you go add annotation, drag the area you want to annotate, type in a title, which is required, um, designate the type. If there's a, if you find some problem with the data, please um, make an annotation out of it and then send a URL to, um, to the contact shown in the, in the menu. So this is a, we'll call it a surface feature of interest. We can, we can do, um, we can type in keywords that can be searched on. Um, and then type in further info. If we want this to be public so other people can see it, we click that box and then we hit add. Um, once we've added an annotation, we can, if you click on it, you can edit it, delete it, or get a shareable link. Okay, well, that, um, that gives you some an overview of the key features of um, open altimetry. If you have any feedback, to either positive or negative, if you want to report problems, um, please go to the contact us under the info button. There you uh, supply a name so we know who you are and your email address, and then um, either indicate there's a technical issue with um, something to do with open altimetry itself, or it's a, something, a question about the data, about ISAT data. So designate one of, one of those two or other, um, and then insert your message here, verify that you're not a robot, and send the message.